If you have shoulder pain and your entire rehab program is only focused on improving your mobility of your glenohumeral or your shoulder joint, and maybe you've done a few exercises to stabilize the scapula, stop. And that's because almost 90% of shoulder pain can be improved by addressing one area that almost everyone neglects. And it's too bad because this area actually provides the foundation for the entire function of the shoulder girdle. And it will influence the mobility of the shoulder blade, the glenohumeral joint, and so much more. What area is that? The rib cage. In this video, you're gonna learn the different dynamics of the rib cage that influence the function of your shoulder, and I'm gonna coach you through exercises to target each area in a specific order. And if you mess up this order, you're not gonna get the most out of the moves. And also too, I'm gonna to show you who this video is not for, because there are some times people can have certain presentations in the shoulder that actually warrant medical attention. You'll get all that and then some. When you're moving your arm out and about, your shoulder blade has to glide around the rib cage. If the rib cage can't change its shape, which according to this study, it can, it will influence the congruency between the shoulder blade and your rib cage. That's gonna influence your shoulder function in a negative light. For example, if you are someone who has a winging scapula, if I flatten the upper back, you'll notice that the space between the shoulder blade and the rib cage is bigger. It kind of looks like winging, doesn't it? But I didn't change anything about the shoulder blade. I changed the shape of the rib cage. So what we want to do with exercise is to alter the number of shapes that the rib cage can attain. The way we do that is through breathing. We want to teach four different qualities about the rib cage. But before I show you what to do, let's talk about who should not be doing these moves. The 10 percenters, you might say. If you are someone who, when you raise your arm, has a shoulder hike, or you're getting numbness and tingling down your arms, you notice that you developed some sort of weakness, you're dropping objects, or maybe your shoulder hurts because you had some sort of traumatic event, or you got this thing right here where you got a dislocation. Well, guess what? Those are medical things that probably need to be checked out first before you go doing some random moves that a physical therapist told you to do on the internet. Get medically cleared first. The first thing we want to change is the dimensions of the rib cage. If you're someone who's limited in your shoulder mobility, chances are the front to back dimensions or anterior to posterior dimensions of the rib cage are restricted. That might make you wider side to side. This will influence the rotational dynamics that should happen at the rib cage. So what we want to do is we want to use an exercise that increases or compresses the side to side dimensions of the rib cage. And you'll notice that when I do this with my hands, it makes the front to back dimensions bigger. This is important because now your shoulder blade can glide more easily across the rib cage if it's got more space front to back. For that, you're gonna to wanna to do this foam roller decompression move with an abduction reach. What this is gonna do is it's gonna expand the front to back dimensions of the rib cage, and the abduction reach is going to help reduce rectus abdominis muscle activity. What you're gonna do is you're gonna get a foam roller. You want the foam roller to be on the rib cage, but right underneath your armpit, just like this. My bottom knee or my bottom thigh is gonna be parallel to the foam roller. My top foot is gonna be at the lower part of the shin or the top part of the foot. So I'm gonna put my weight onto the foam roller, so I'm gonna be pretty heavy on it. You'll notice that when I do that, my side comes up off the ground just a little bit. My head's looking straight ahead to the horizon. It's gonna be a little uncomfortable on your rib cage, just a heads up. Top arm is gonna be reaching slightly overhead like this. You wanna silently breathe in through the nose with your mouth closed, it doesn't have to be full. On the exhale, slowly reach your arm like this. It's a subtle reach and it's paced with the exhale. A lot of people will screw this up by either bringing the arm down like this as part of their reach or they take up all the slack. Both of those are going to be undesirable. You wanna get your weight on the foam roller silent in through the nose, soft exhale through the mouth, subtle reach, hold position on the next inhale. You'll wanna do three to four rounds of five breaths 
per side two times a day for two weeks before moving on to the next move. Once we've favorably worked on changing rib cage shape, we then want to work on expanding all of the different segments of the ribs. We have to do this in a specific order. The lungs fill just like water from the bottom to the top. We want to encourage a breathing strategy that works in the exact same fashion. The first part of the rib cage that will fill is the posterior or backside of the rib cage. This is called posterior expansion or dorsal rostral expansion. The way the ribs move is during inhalation, they will move backward and upward. And then during exhalation, they'll move downward and inward. We want to choose exercises that facilitate this backward and upward movement, but you can't force your upper back to expand. The inhales must be quiet and easy. We're going to use exercises to bias airflow into the upper back. This is important if you are someone who has scapular winging or someone who's got a flat back representation. Both of those things can influence your shoulder function and subsequently pain. For that, you're gonna go with a banded upper back expansion move. Here's what you're gonna need. You're gonna need a yoga block and you'll need a very light mini band. The mini band is gonna go right below your hands. The yoga block is gonna go on the table and it's gonna go between your elbows at the widest position possible. In terms of hand position, ideally you're gonna have your palms facing you, but if that's uncomfortable, you can go with a neutral grip position. I'm gonna have the inner portion of my elbow or the medial epicondyle right up against the block. That's gonna be my contact point. And I want my elbows lower than my shoulders right here. You're gonna look straight ahead. Chest is gonna be parallel to the wall. You're gonna silently breathe in through the nose. Exhale, slowly move your torso away without crunching. You do not want to slouch. You don't want to force it. It's a really small movement. It's this amount. Silent in, exhale, subtle reach while keeping that inner elbow pressure. From here, I'm going to spin my arms out without losing contact on the yoga block. You're going to silently breathe in through the nose, soft exhale through the mouth, hold position. You'll want to do five sets of five breaths two times per day for two weeks. As it gets more comfortable, you can enhance the difficulty by changing the dimensions on the yoga block until your elbows get closer together. Once we've gotten the upper back to fill, now we're gonna work on encouraging front side rib cage expansion or anterior expansion. It's also called the pump handle action. Normally, when you breathe in, the rib cage and sternum should move forward and upward. And then when you breathe out, it should move down and back. If you are someone who's got more rounded shoulders, you might have a difficult time creating that forward and upward movement. That can negatively influence your shoulder mobility. We want to encourage exercises that bias more air to the front of the chest next. For that, you're gonna to wanna to use an elevated quadruped on elbows position. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have my arms forming a triangle with my index finger and my thumb forming the JZROC sign. You're gonna look up at your fingertips, start sag. Your weight distribution is going to be through the pointy part of the elbow and the base of the wrist. I'm gonna silently breathe in through the nose. During the exhale, I'm gonna slowly add more weight to those two points on my forearm. And because of that, my whole torso is gonna move away from the pads. You wanna slowly add more weight over the course of the breaths. You're gonna do five sets of five breaths with that move for anywhere from two to four weeks. The reason why I'm giving such a long amount of time is because you can progress the movement either by going to a lower and lower and lower surface until you're on the floor, or you can switch it to a one-arm hold that's gonna help improve the rotational aspect of the movement. Just make sure as you progress, you're not doing the common screw ups of arching the back or rounding the back excessively. And the last way to create expansion occurs when you go fully overhead. And that is actually rib cage and spinal rotation. When you raise your arm overhead, the thorax actually has to rotate towards that side to some degree. 
but it doesn't do so in like this crazy manner like I'm just demonstrating. Instead, it rotates from an airflow perspective. What has to happen is if I'm raising my left hand overhead, the left upper back has to expand backwards and the right front of the chest has to expand forward. And it has to do so in a manner that occurs all the way up. But we can bias this rotation by performing an overhead motion in a specific way. The move that will complete the rotation and improve your overhead mobility is the downward dog ipsilateral walk or the Phil Collins style downward dog. Here's what you're gonna do. For this, you wanna start hands and knees, Make sure your hands are completely flat. You want to be weighted through the wiggly bone on your wrist called the pisiform and the base of the index finger. I'm going to silently breathe in through the nose. Exhale, ramp up the weight through those points. Knees are going to come up and I'm going to keep those points flat as I shift my weight backwards. Make sure during this point you don't arch your butt up in the air like this. You want to keep weight through the hands. From here, you're going to inhale, step back with the same side arm and leg making sure the hand stays flat. Exhale, hold. Opposite side, same thing. Inhale, step back. Exhale, hold. Looking down towards the ground at all times. You'll wanna do four sets of five steps per side with that move. Make sure as you do it that your hand stays flat the entire time. The most common issue that people will have is they'll end up digging with the fingers and the base of the index finger will come up. And those would be the key movements that you would need to improve the dynamics of the shoulder girdle in relationship to the rib cage. Make sure you expand the front to back dimensions, you improve upper back or posterior expansion, drive anterior expansion, and then complete rotation. Now, a lot of times, people who have shoulder pain also might have some neck issues. If you need something to address that, I check out this video right here, which goes into some common movements you can use to improve your neck pain.